There is an element of absurdity in American culture, of outrageousness, of freedom-loving, flag-humping, eagle-hugging, football-watching, gun-toting, beer-guzzling, hamburger-stuffing, patriotic fervor. There is an element of the ridiculous in American culture, and the truth is we all love it. I remember my first time tailgating at a college football game and watching a bunch of fat middle-aged freaks getting pissed drunk on cheap beer, slurring along to John Denver's country roads, waving both glitzy flags and drizzled wieners in each other's faces, shoving greasy grilled cheeseburgers and hot dogs down their choked throats, watching in awed astonishment and thinking to myself, what a god dang country. God bless America. And that's Senator Armstrong. Despite being created by a Japanese company, this guy is quintessentially American. Senator Armstrong is the politician that every American male politician wishes they could be. Senator Armstrong is the tough guy, muscle man, football playing, action politician caricature that people who are obsessed with Donald Trump think Donald Trump is. If Senator Armstrong was a real person, he would get votes. The American people would love this guy, would love the grandstanding, the showboating, the self-aware absurdity, the machismo, the shameless, outrageous hyper-nationalism, the open talk of warfare, and the obsession with masculine strength. And they'd love Armstrong even more because behind all his rambling, long-winded speeches, beneath all the bluster and the goofiness and the cheesy lines, there's a core of truth. Metal Gear Rising, despite being one of the most ridiculous and goofiest action games I've ever played, has a shockingly intelligent narrative. It has a deeply flawed protagonist who struggles with the contradiction between his pursuit of justice and the incredible violent slaughter he engages in. The gulf between his high-minded ideals and the grim reality that, over the course of this story, he has killed hundreds of people who might not deserve it who each have just as complicated motivations as himself for being in this fight. The game has a cast of fairly complex antagonists, none of whom are killing just for the sake of killing, none of whom are just evil for the sake of being evil, but each of whom has some different perspective on the meaning of violence and warfare, each of whom are happy to monologue at length about their individual philosophies and motivations, and I'm all here for it. I loved listening to these weird mercenary murder cyborgs spouting off philosophical treatises on the cynical nature of violence in between bouts of some of the most ridiculous and most cinematic action gameplay I've ever seen in a video game. Metal Gear Rising is freaking crazy, and at the top of this pile of villainous philosophical murder cyborgs is Senator Armstrong. He's silly, he's outrageous, he's internet meme-worthy. Everything he says and does is hilarious. But again, there's a truth beneath all the bluster, however warped that truth might be. Armstrong says that the American nation is rotted deep down inside. That we're sick, that we need a revolution to fix all our problems. That America isn't great now, but it could be great again. And that's something that basically every American of every political stripe agrees with. Though few people can agree on what the true nature of that rot is. And what makes Armstrong really really American is that his true obsession is with freedom. He espouses a radical brand of individual freedom that borders on a kind of anarchistic social Darwinism on a grand scale, where every individual should be able to do absolutely anything and anything everything they want, just so long as they're strong enough to do it. To really understand this over-the-top villain, we've gotta watch a couple of his late game cutscenes together, because his monologues are as dense as they are hilarious. So here's the first one, and this cutscene shows Armstrong at his silliest. It isn't Saucy Jack. Just a little too late, as usual. Armstrong. Impressive little toy you've got there. But your plan ends here. <laughs> Idiot. You're not ending our plan. 
You're expanding it. Check the internet lately. <laughs> Ryder, Air Force One is turning back to the States. What? How'd they know? Someone posted photos of what's happening on the base. The whole world is up in arms. Show me. How did they... Marshall's plan is ruined. The hell it is. Look what they're saying. The story just went live, and already they're calling for blood. But the president was saved. And yet American blood was spilled. By Americans. Besides, a few dozen soldiers is tragic, but nothing to start a major war over. That's just a spark, son. The excuse we've been waiting for. America's wanted this war for years. The Patriots, they knew war was good for the economy. Four years later, their legacy lingers on. The memes. They left us their great isms. Nationalism, unilateralism, materialism. Welcome maxims for those with no faith, without guiding principles of their own. Give yourself up to the whole. No need to better yourself. You're American. You're number one. Then the only value left is dollar value. The economy. So we'll do whatever it takes to keep it humming along. Even war. Especially war. Bullshit. The Patriots planted the seed. We don't need them around to filter and foster their memes any longer. We're spreading them just fine ourselves. Every American man, woman, and child. We're all sons of a Patriots now! <sighs> we just need something to jumpstart the economy out of this funk. This recession has been stuck in since the fall of SOP. <laughs> and the military costs? Wasting billions is going to help the economy? PMCs, arms manufacturers, job creators, Jack. All those workers spending money, paying taxes. Trust me, a little war can work wonders. So grease the gears with some innocent blood, is that it? Oh, relax, Jack. It's a war on terror. We're not out to kill civilians. Extremists, lawless gangs, madmen. <sighs> of course, that would have to include you. Every single individual one of this guy's lines are so fun. He actually opens this cutscene by stomping out of a giant death robot, casually taking a puff on a huge cigar, and saying, well if it isn't Saucy Jack. This guy is awesome. Another key element of Armstrong's character is his ability to manipulate internet discourse, and through that, manipulate popular opinion, and through that, he can manipulate the course of events across the entire world. He understands that internet culture is all about appearances. It's all about shaping a certain narrative. It's all about fomenting an emotional outrage that can fit inside a narrow 280 character limit. Limit. Armstrong is a villain who uses the most modern of all propaganda techniques, social media, to further his schemes. When I say that Metal Gear Rising has a surprisingly intelligent plot, this is the sort of thing I mean. Armstrong is a ridiculous, over-the-top caricature of a sleazy American politician, but he's also smart. He's a modern villain who knows how to make effective use out of modern tools. Also, notice that line. America has wanted this war for years. There is some truth to this line, and it doesn't even really matter what war he's referring to. Along with the absurdity and the ridiculousness, there's also an element of war fervor in American culture. The military is central to our culture.
culture too. What's the point of having the biggest and most advanced military in the world if you don't get to throw your weight around once in a while? Armstrong combines these two elements of American culture, the ridiculous with the war fervor. And aren't these such a dangerous mix? These are two elements you want to keep as far away from each other as possible. You wouldn't ever want to see Bozo the Clown driving a battle tank. Bozo the Clown has no business piloting a fighter jet. But in America, these two things, the ridiculous and the military bluster, are married to each other. They are inseparable, and Armstrong's character reflects that. And then Armstrong speaks to the great cynicism in American culture, which is the suspicion that we don't have any ideals at all anymore. That all we really care about is money and making as much of it as possible. All our isms are meaningless in the face of dollar value. I can't believe this character was developed by a Japanese company because they're totally nailing it. I love the animations in this cutscene. Watch the way he swings his arms around while he talks, his big stupid poses. Armstrong is as hilarious as he is dangerous. There is a charisma within comedy. It's hard not to love someone who can make us laugh, sometimes no matter how deplorable their ideas ideas are. And he presents a pretty succinct description of the American war economy. When people talk about how much money this government wastes on the military or on this or that world conflict, the really insidious thing is that we're spending that money on ourselves. We're giving the money to each other. Much of it stays within the American economic system. It's not just the rich who benefit from this. Not only do we get to pay ourselves a bunch of money, but we get to feel good about taking down a bad guy too. It can become a vicious cycle of business interests, idealism, and bloodshed. Again, this game has a surprisingly intelligent story. All the more so because Armstrong is a totally self-aware villain. He understands how crazy everything he says is. He understands that he's cynically using American stereotypes to his advantage. He understands that he is selfish and greedy. Armstrong is the kind of villain who knows that he's a villain. Alright, so after this, Raiden destroys the giant death robot. Then, Armstrong marches out and beats the crap out of Raiden with his bare fists, while spitting out some more hilarious one-liners. This is another thing that makes Armstrong a great villain. He's tough, he's strong, he's threatening. He can kick our hero's butt. As he says, he's not just some beltway pansy. He says he could break the president in half with his bare hands, and I believe him. Let's skip ahead to his next big speech. And this is a really long cutscene. You're not gonna hear my voice again for like five minutes. As you watch this very long cutscene, and you hear Armstrong explain his true motivations, I want you to think about a question. Could Senator Armstrong get elected in contemporary American politics? Politics. And I'm serious. If this guy was running, could he get votes? Is this Japanese video game character so American that he actually out-Americans our real-life politicians? Is he just a clown and a buffoon? Or is this someone that Americans would take seriously? All right, the truth then. You're right about one thing. I do need capital, and votes. Wanna know why? I have a dream. What? That one day, every person in this nation will control their own destiny. A land of the truly free, damn it. A nation of action, not words ruled by strength, not committee. Where the law changes to suit the individual. Not the other way around! Ugh. Where power and justice are back where they belong! In the hands of the people! Where every man is free to think, to act, for himself! All these lunatic lawyers and chicken shit bureaucrats! Fuck this 24 7 internet spew of trivia and celebrity bullshit! Oh. 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 
Fuck American pride! Fuck the media! Fuck all of it! America is diseased, rotten to the core. There's no saving it. We need to pull it out by the roots. Wipe the slate clean. Burn it down! And from the ashes, a new America will be born! Evolved, but unchecked! The weak will be purged, and the strongest will thrive. Free to live as they see fit. They'll make America great again! What the hell are you talking about? You still don't get it. I'm using war as a business to get elected! So I can end war as a business. In my new America, People will die and kill for what they believe! Not for money, not for oil! Not for what they're told is right! Every man will be free to fight his own wars! I don't write my own speeches. You should try fighting for what you believe in sometime, Jack. Not for a company or a nation or for anyone else. Maybe I was wrong about you. Am I finally getting through? With this world of pointless wars, Jack. I was wrong. You're not greedy. You're batshit insane! My question before we watched that long cutscene was, could Armstrong actually get elected today? Raiden, and through him the writers of the game, say no. Raiden asks, how did you ever get elected? He accuses Armstrong of being insane, as if that is somehow a disqualifying factor in American politics. Metal Gear Rising was released in 2013, and back in 2013 I don't think everyone realized how totally okay the American people are with crazy. Not only are we okay with crazy, we love crazy. We love getting outraged over crazy. We love cheering on crazy. We love watching crazy on both Fox News and CNN. We love watching clips of crazy on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. We cannot get enough of crazy. In today's meme-obsessed and social media-dominated internet landscape, Armstrong's antics and ramblings would dominate the news cycle. It would start with memes, and then it would get serious, and more serious, and more serious, and finally it would become lethal, because Armstrong's ideology would kill millions. Armstrong is a charismatic character, and so there is something undeniably appealing about his worldview here. He speaks of a radical form of freedom, where absolutely anyone can do whatever they want, say whatever they want, be whatever they want. Isn't that exactly the kind of freedom Americans love most? Don't Americans 
Americans hate being told what to do. We're not gonna wear seatbelts. We're not gonna wear face diapers. We're not gonna take your poison shot. We're gonna do whatever we god dang want because this is America. Land of the free, numb nuts. Armstrong calls for a society built on nothing but personal strength. If you are strong enough to rule the world, then you should do it. If you're strong enough to fight and defeat your boss in Mortal Kombat, then you should have his job. If you're strong enough to carry a woman off the street and drag her into your dungeon, then that's your new wife, baby. His vision would obviously make for a terrifying world, but I suspect that a lot of people would find it at least somewhat appealing. A lot of people would hear this and think to themselves, well, that works for me because I am strong. I am strong enough to do whatever I want if society would just get out of my way. Armstrong talks about purging the weak, but that's a truly insane statement. Because to purge the weak, you would have to purge literally everyone. The fact is, everyone is weak sometimes. Everyone has weaknesses. That's the reason we build families and communities, so that whatever you your weakness is, someone with a compatible strength can cover for you, and vice versa. In an ideal community, everyone works to their strengths and no one is destroyed by their weaknesses. But a lot of people either can't or won't recognize their own weaknesses, and so they would find Armstrong's worldview very appealing. I think this message, espoused by a ridiculous villain in an even more ridiculous Japanese action video game, really would find supporters out in the American political landscape. This cutscene also includes my absolute favorite Armstrong moment in the game, when Raiden pretends to be won over by his speech, and Armstrong immediately picks him up and dusts him off. They even hug! There's a charming affability and gullibility in Armstrong's character that makes him seem even more charismatic. He admires strength above all else, and Raiden is undeniably strong. Armstrong is happy to have him on the team, delighted even. There is no bitterness within Armstrong's character, no hatred. He is not a villain driven by anger or hate. He is driven by an ideal. And that's part of what makes him so appealing too, so fun. His criticisms of American politics and culture are legitimate. Who doesn't agree with Armstrong when he declares, fuck all these lawyers and bureaucrats, fuck this 24-7 spew of trivia and celebrity bullshit, fuck American pride, fuck the media, fuck all of it. I agree, fuck all of those things. But his solution to these very legitimate problems is insane. A far better solution would be a strengthening of communal ties, a focus on all the things that bind us together Together rather than the few things that tear us apart, an uplifting of compassion and empathy as truer American values than selfishness and greed. But I'm getting off track here. Following this cutscene, the battle between Raiden and Armstrong continues, and the senator reveals that the source of his strength are nanomachines coursing through his blood, which I found to be a bit disappointing. Armstrong isn't actually strong. It's not truly his strength. It's the hyper-advanced and incredibly expensive nanomachines that are strong. He's a cheater, just like every other rich person. He espouses a worldview where strength will determine a man's place in the world, but he's not working on a level playing field. He has a paid-for advantage. It cheapens everything he said. His ideals are bogus. It's not really about strength. It's about money, just like every Everything else. To end this essay, let's fast forward to Armstrong's death and hear his final words. <coughs> Status quo will go on, for a while longer at least. War will continue as an institution, as an industry. Men will fight for reasons they don't understand, causes they don't believe in. But at least, I'll leave a worthy successor. You, 
Jack. You carve your own path. Use whatever methods you see fit. <coughs> you don't let legal bullshit get in the way. And if it costs a few lives, so be it. Armstrong ends his life with a very cliche, we're not so different, you and I. This is classic villain talk. Villains are always saying this to the heroes. However, while it is a cliche, it also speaks to a fundamental storytelling truth, which is that, in really good stories, the villain is almost always a dark reflection of the hero. In a lot of stories, the villain will embody some negative trait within the hero, so that when the hero defeats the villain, they're also overcoming that dark part of themselves. And, like with so much of his dialogue, there is more truth than falsehood to what Armstrong says here. Raiden's actions in the game really do exemplify Armstrong's worldview. Armstrong wants to create a world where those who are strong enough get to do whatever they want, get to shape the world in any way they desire, right or wrong ignoring laws and mores and popular opinion. And that's exactly what Raiden has done in this game. He worked outside the law, and sometimes he did what he thought was right, but other times he simply did what he wanted to do. And what he really wanted to do was destroy the Desperados and Armstrong, punish them for their crimes. In Armstrong's ideal world, good people would be free to do good, just so long as they possess the necessary strength. Like I've said multiple times already, this is intelligent writing. His worldview isn't only a playground for atrocities, there is also the possibility for good. And the hero's actions aren't really invalidating the villain's worldview. In fact, Raiden's actions could be used to argue in favor of Armstrong's worldview. Even in defeat and in death, Armstrong doesn't lose control, doesn't lose his composure the way so many other action video game villains do. His intellect and his charisma remain until his very last breath. He is an impressively written villain. I know most people think of Senator Armstrong as just being some ridiculous meme, but this is actually really good writing. This is a villain who is compelling, who is charismatic, who is fun, who is silly, who has ideals, who has an intriguingly coherent, if completely insane and dangerous, worldview. This is a villain who is strong, dangerous, even more so because he is so charismatic and affable. I'd never played Metal Gear Rising before, but after playing, I think Armstrong has become one of my favorite villains in the series. And this is a series with a lot of great villains. It's been a long time since I played a Metal Gear game, and I'd forgotten how much I love its wacky, over-the-top, conspiracy-laden, but often intelligent narrative style. It's gotten me interested in replaying the other games. Luckily, there's a new Metal Gear Solid collection releasing this October. So, if there's any interest, maybe I could do a whole series of essays, examining all of the crazy villains in these games. 